Have you ever wondered why people do the behaviors that they do? Why maybe a family member smokes or why somebody's in a toxic relationship? Or maybe yourself, maybe you wonder why you do some of the things that you do. Well, it all stems from your needs and we all have six basic human needs. They're not wants, they're not desires, they're not shoulds. All of these six basic human needs are shared by every single person on the planet. It has nothing to do with culture, has nothing to do with race, income levels, none of that. We all have needs. So when somebody does something that you don't agree with, let's just use smoking. And you wonder why this individual smokes or you wonder why this individual uses drugs. A better question to ask is what needs are being met by that behavior? Likewise, you could use a guy who works out a lot, eats well, um, is generally healthy. He's still getting his needs met, but in a healthier way. He still has needs. And so today I wanna to talk to you about the six basic human needs we all have and how they correlate into our belief systems and really hopefully give you an idea of why people do the things they do. It's all on needs. Hi, my name is Jared Schumacher. This is Magnetic Men's Club. Thank you so much for watching. The six basic human needs we all share. The very first four that I'm gonna explain are called the needs of themselves. These are the four we all must have. The last two are really the needs outside of ourselves, and we'll get into that. But the very first human need is the need for certainty. We all have a need in our lives for feeling safe, feeling secure, stability, predictability. This kind of explains why, you know, some, some people prefer having uh, like a corporate job because they perceive that's more more certain that they're gonna get a paycheck, they want a steady paycheck. And this also ties into relationships, why people are geared more towards maybe a long-term relationship. They like that certainty in their life. The second human need is uncertainty because if we all were certain every single day we all knew exactly what was going to happen every single day. Life would be very boring. So God created a balance, uncertainty. And this is that need for excitement in our life, for change, for adventure. This explains why, you know, you might want to take a vacation on the whim, try new foods, maybe try a new hobby. You're trying to spice up life. You're trying to create a little bit uncertainty in your life. The third need, human need we all have, is really just significance, that need to feel important, that need to have recognition, to have respect. And you can see this on somebody who um, is really trying to climb the corporate ladder and be a CEO. Um, it's not so much they want to be the CEO, they want the respect from it. They're meeting a need for significance. Could also be, uh, you know, in a relationship. You feel important, you know, when you're in a relationship, you feel recognized. Everybody has ways of getting these needs met. If you ever wondered why young men join gangs, they're trying to get their need of significant or significance met. Maybe they're in a fatherless household or maybe both parents just aren't there and they're in foster care and they gravitate towards gangs because it makes them feel important. It makes them feel respected. It makes them feel powerful. This is one of the biggest needs most people have is in some level how they get their significance. And so troubled youth tends to go into gangs. It also is really why you have biker gangs and other gangs out there. There's a need to feel important, to belong to something bigger than yourself. The fourth is love and connection. 
We all have a need for love. We all have a need to connect with people. Social interaction, it could be intimacy, obviously romance. The need for love and connection. Now, most people want love, but they will settle for connection. And so this need can be met through positive needs, such as a positive, healthy relationship. And it could also be through toxic relationships. They still have that connection. They still have that feel that they're connected to that person. The fifth need, which we're not gonna go into too much because I wanna keep on the top four, is just the need for growth. We all have this need for personal development, self-development, self-improvement, and you get that need met through reading, taking online courses, maybe going to college at night. You're trying to level up, you're trying to grow as a person. And really the fifth one is just contribution. Charities, uh, maybe you're a volunteer firefighter or a volunteer at, say, like a helping hounds or a dog animal rescue. Or you're, you have that need to contribute, to kind of give back of yourself, to give back to society. So how does all of this tie in? So we all reach these needs either positively, negatively, or neutral. And we're going to just use, again, toxic relationships. If you're in a toxic relationship or you know somebody who's in a toxic relationship and you just don't really understand, why don't they just leave? Why, why, this, why is this so hard? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Anytime you can combine needs of three or more, so if you have a need for certainty, uncertainty, um, significance and love and connection, if three of these needs are met in that habit or in that relationship, it's called a super need. And it's very difficult to break out of that. It's not the fact that they want to be in that relationship, it's what needs are being met in that relationship that they're not getting someplace else. And so we're gonna just use a toxic relationship. A guy and a girl start dating and she completely fell in love with him. He is everything that she thought he was. He was a package that he presented himself very well, but like a lot of these toxic relationships, typically what happens, they're very good on the front end and then they start changing a few months out once the woman gets emotionally hooked on this guy. So we're just going to use the beginning of the relationship. You're intoxicated with this person. He's saying all the right things. The sex is amazing. Uh, he's taking you on places. He's dumping a lot of effort into this relationship. Often what he's trying to really do is in a form of gaslighting. He's trying to spike your emotions so high so that when you're actually hooked, he's got you. You're not going anywhere. And then this is where that roller coaster ride of that relationship goes up and down and up and down because your emotions are spiked. So let's look at it on your needs. We'll use Beth and Jim. I don't fucking know. Fill in the names. Beth realizes that Jim is not the, pro the package that he originally claimed he was, yet she's emotionally tied now. She's trying to rationalize the beginning of this relationship, or as it moves in, that she's actually getting a need met through this by thinking she can change him. That need for significance. Thinking that eventually he will see the harm he's doing to her, eventually he will come around and realize that she's a really good girl, eventually come around and see that she's not doing the things he's claiming. See, they use a lot of manipulative tactics like uh, assuming that you're sleeping with other people, that you are um, you know, talking to other guys, they use shame, guilt, and insults to you. All of these in the front end, you start rationalizing, thinking, yeah, he's been really mean to me, but I'm gonna stick into this because I think I can change him. You actually can't change him, but you're getting a need met, that need for significance. You think 
you can change him. You think you're going to be the girl that can completely change this guy from his bad toxic behaviors into this good human. Sadly, as time goes by, you start realizing that what he starts to do, besides the blaming, besides the insults, besides the um, emotional abuse, he's isolated you from everyone, which makes you completely dependent on him. Even his emotional abuse, you have a level of certainty that, yep, he's going to call me names. Yep, he's going to, um, you know, be an asshole to me. He may even be physical, but it's still a need being met. He's your only conduit to the world because he's isolated you out. It also creates that need for uncertainty because again, you always feel like you're walking on eggshells around this person. There is that need for uncertainty. Well, maybe today he's going to be nice to me. Maybe today is the day that he's going to realize the error of his ways and come around and say, baby, I'm sorry. I can't believe what a dickhead I've been. Can we start over? Maybe today. It's never about love in these circumstances or these situations. It's always about control. So now she wants to leave. She has verbally said, I'm leaving, I can't deal with this. By him saying buzzwords like, I will hurt myself, or no one's ever gonna love you the way I love you, her need for understanding that, that need of love and connection, when he starts saying this, is she's gonna feel alone. She doesn't want to be unloved. She doesn't want to be alone for the rest of her life. So they tend to stay in these relationships. So when you have these four needs that are met in this toxic relationship, it's called a super need. This is why it's incredibly hard to get out of them. And so what you have to do is be strong enough to realize that my friends are, have been isolated, but they're not, they haven't disappeared. My family hasn't disappeared. So you need to get around the people that truly do love you, that can help you get out of these relationships. And you might even have to get the police involved. So once Beth realizes that she's not going to be able to change this guy, that all of her efforts, all of her uh, desires, all of her hopes that this guy could change, once she actually realizes this, this is when growth kicks in. This is that fifth human need. That sh that's not being met in this relationship. She's realizing that this guy is actually stunning my growth. He's not letting me grow. He's trying to keep me squashed. Because she has a need for all six of these, the best thing that she can do is A, leave that situation, get in with her, a good therapist, get in with her friends and her family to get her out of that situation so that she can begin to grow again, so that she can be able to take these needs that were being met by this toxic relationship and substituting them with healthier needs. I do a lot of coaching on relationships. I actually never really wanted to. Um, but this is just kind of where my path has taken me and toxic relationships. I'm working with four different women right now on just this subject. And they usually come to me embarrassed, which you shouldn't be. They usually come to me obviously scared, um, frustrated, not really knowing, uh, the outcome that, that, the steps that she must take in order to get out of this, they're scared. And if you are in a toxic relationship with somebody that you feel is going to harm you or you feel like is going to harm a, you know, a, a loved one, a family member, then you need to start taking the, the steps to protect yourself and the people around you. Get out of that relationship, move in with your parents, move in with friends and family, get out of that relationship, get the police involved if you have to, get a restraining order, and start moving away from that relationship. I've had a few women that I haven't personally coached, I know that actually had to move to a different state to get away from this person. So you have to understand, she has her needs met in this toxic relationship. He's also getting his needs met. And because his needs are being met just in a different way, 
This is why he, stay, he wants to stay into the relationship. So you can have two people both getting their needs met, but at the detriment to one and at the benefit to the other. So think of it this way. He's getting his need for certainty. He knows I've made her scared. I've made her dependent on me. I'm certain she's not going to go anywhere. And if she does, his need for uncertainty kicks in. She doesn't know what I'm capable of doing. Most of these guys are pussies, so they're not going to do much. But his need for uncertainty is also being met. Well, what if she does leave? Or this little game that they play, that what do, if she does this, there's excitement in it. Her crying might even be that need that's being met from him. It's a sick, twisted thing a lot of these guys um, play on women. His need for significance absolutely kicks in. He feels superior to this woman. He feels so significant because she's so scared of him. That's how he gets his need met. And in a sick way, this is how he gets his love and his connection. It's usually the connection part has nothing to do with love. He thinks it's love, but it's the connection. If I put a gun to your head right now, how connected are we? We're very connected. It's the same way if I put the proverbial emotional gun to her head every single day, putting her down, belittling, how connected are they? They're very connected. So all four of his needs initially are being met as well. This is what makes it toxic. If you are struggling in this area, please fill out your contact information. Let's get on a free call so that we can start working on this together. You probably do need therapy, which is something we can't help you, but we can at least start the process and find you a good therapist. My name is Jared Schoemaker. This is Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll talk soon.